You're listening to Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress podcast. I'm your host, Nadine Bozeman. In this podcast, I'm sharing business systems and strategies specifically tailored to the bridal sewing industry so you can build your own modern and profitable bridal alterations business. Join me as I also get to chat with fellow seamstresses and share their personal success stories. I'm so glad you're here and that we can grow together in this unique trade. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Secrets of a Bridal Seamstress. This is the Monday after our Austin retreat. So I just wanted to give you a little debrief of how the retreat went and share like three big takeaways from the event. Yesterday, I definitely like did not get off my couch all day and I was eating like nonstop. So I think I was like just re- fueling <laughs> after an awesome week. And today I'm like, okay, the recovery is a little bit easier, but I definitely am in my sweats. But I just wanted to hop on and give you that recap because it was such an awesome week and I have a lot to share with you, like several takeaways. So for those of you watching, our new background's not done yet. In fact, everything that's going to be on the wall is like on the floor behind me, but hopefully by next week, after my laundry is caught up with and, you know, all the retreat stuff is wrapped up, I'll get this back wall cute for you. But Anyway, um, so a few minor takeaways, or I guess like low key takeaways. I love tacos. Oh my goodness. Like Texas tacos. I could not stop eating them. And like the, I had my last night there, we had like brisket tacos and I wish I could like pack them with me. They were like so good. So the food was awesome. I love just Austin in general. Like Dron and I got back on the plane and we're like, we could we could see ourselves moving to Austin down the road. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but it was just such a cool area. Like there was so much great food, so many things to see and like super friendly people. It was just like a really cool destination. So I can definitely see us going back to Austin either for a retreat or maybe Duran and I'll just go for vacation. Who knows? But it was like super fun. The weather was okay. The humidity kind of messed me up. Not going to lie. So I feel like one day I had curly hair and it was like just this big poofy poodle mess, which was fine, whatever. Like nobody was looking at me anyway. And then day two, like I tried to straighten it and I feel like that was like, <laughs> that just made things even worse. So I'm really happy to be back home in Olympia and where my hair, at least I know what to expect. You know what I'm saying? When you're like in a new area and you're like, what, what do I, how much product do I need in my hair? And you never have enough apparently in Austin. Okay. It just messed me up. And also I was so excited to like pack for like our swag bags and like all the details of the retreat that I totally forgot like half my makeup, my perfume, like jewelry, like several like outfit choices. I I, I felt like I was camping borderline because it was like, I just had like specific things to wear and that was just a little rough. So I felt a little disheveled, but you know, it's fine. It wasn't about me anyway. So I was like, okay, just... Moving on. But overall, it was a fantastic time. So we had three separate speakers. We had Wendy and Jessica on day one. And then day two, we had Bianca. Totally different topics, totally different vibes from each speaker and just great content. Like, you know, I guess since I was organizing it, I'm like, okay, like I'm sure I'll get something out of it, but this is more for like everybody else because I was in like planner mode, right? And I, from each speaker, I was like, ooh, like trying to write furiously. And it was just so fulfilling. Like it was really, really great. And in so many different ways, we had this topic with Wendy of like how to deal with difficult clients and their entourage. And there was some role playing involved and it was so practical. And then we were able to share questions like, well, what if this happens? Common scenarios that we see. What if, you know, the bride's mom says this, what do I do? And, you know, Wendy literally acted it out with us and it was just super helpful. And like then learning about her methodology behind Do You Speak Bride and how that affects us. And it was super good that we had this awesome conversation with her with this like Q&A, you know, she wanted like the seamstress perspective on the whole wedding gown experience. And like, what would you want stylists to know? What would you want store owners to know? And she recorded this whole conversation because she's like, I want to get the word out. And she ended her session by really sincerely apologizing to us for not being more appreciated in the wedding industry. And it was super touching. I think there were a lot of tears at that moment because we just felt really valued and seen. And we were able to share with her some 
situations that happen because of specific sizes ordered or things unintentionally said by stylists that don't really align with like what we do or what we're able to do. And she was like, what? I've never heard of that before. So it was just really good conversation. And she like stuck around all day and then she had dinner with us and just kept the conversation going and she was so invested in us. So that was awesome. And then Jessica came Thursday afternoon and her session was called Content to Cash. So it was like, why are we using Instagram? Why are we using Facebook or TikTok or our blogs or whatever? And she really brought it down to like, what is the motivation behind all this stuff? And it's like, are we spinning our wheels or is it actually getting stuff done? And working for our business, making money. Like what is the point of all this? So that was very good. We got some really good examples written out or like how to, you know, we hear all these examples of like, use your pillars to plan content. Okay. That's great. But then what do I actually do? Like, what does that look like? And so we were able to break it down and make examples of our our posting schedules or long-term goals and long-term strategies. So that was really cool. And it was so different from our morning session with Wendy that it was like a fun palette cleanser. And then Bianca came on Friday to talk about goals, how to break them down, how to really clearly define our why. And then she was really specific with like how to break down the goals, long-term, short-term. So that was awesome because we were so jazzed after Thursday that she's like, all right, let's bring it home. Let's get the goals written out and talk about it. And it was just so back and forth. She was very conversational and it was super fun. And then Friday afternoon, we wrapped up with some topical discussions that had been requested by our attendees. Friday was awesome. Both days were awesome. It was just so full. Like, I think that's why I'm still recovering. Like I'm still like halfway like comatose today (laughs) because there was like so much happening for both of those days, you know, but I want to share with you three major takeaways that I took from the retreat from those two and a half days together. And I'm just so impressed by our community and the people who showed up. I'm just so impressed by them. I don't know how else to say it. So takeaway number one, seamstresses love to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So one of my favorite moments was at the end of the retreat on Friday night, we went to dinner at a place called Fairground in Austin. And it's like this indoor great hall with a bunch of different, almost indoor food trucks, but they weren't trucks, but they were like little restaurants and a food court but food court doesn't sound right. Anyway, so it's really cute inside. Then you order what you want. We got to all sit together. So that was like our final thing together. And then we had our quote unquote goodbyes, which lasted literally two hours. So the first set of goodbyes were indoors and, you know, there were a lot of tears and hugs and like, well, and final sentiments, whatever. And then we gradually made our way outside to like the patio outside fairground. And we had like round two of the goodbyes Cause then, you know, you had to like go to a different group and do the same thing. And then we were walking towards the parking garage and one group went this way, one went that way. And then the same thing happened. It just was a very long goodbye. I was like, oh my goodness, this is still happening. Okay. We love to talk because community matters. That's the takeaway. Community matters. But then also seamstresses do love to talk, but you know, we work a uh, solo. It can be a lonely job. And so when you're in a room with other people who get it and understand your struggles and can literally finish sentences for you, that is so impactful. And it makes such a difference when you know, like somebody gets it and like has your back. And so that sense of community, it matters. And we had a couple, like I mentioned earlier, like those topical conversations that were predetermined by the attendees. Like they told me what they want to talk about through like a Google form. And, you know, I guess as an old teacher, I'm constantly aware of like pacing and making sure like, you know, like things are moving along, people aren't getting bored, it's not getting stagnant in the room. And like, it never got stagnant. It's like they could have talked for hours. It was probably like two hours at least, maybe two and a half. And I'm like, you guys are literally are not slowing down. So that was just kind of crazy to me, but it's because that community piece is so important. So when we have that in our membership, you're able to hop on the calls and like you're in the Zooms and you're, you know, talking to people on the interwebs. And then you finally like hug and meet in person and you just imagine how much more it all is when you're all together. So that sense of community is so important and it makes such a difference because the connections that these women made at the retreat, let me put it this way, the connections that were made last year at the retreat, 
I saw that like tenfold this year because the returning attendees came and they're like, oh my goodness, my besties that I made last year, they're here again. We can catch up. We're hugging again. They had that instant bond. And then I saw, you know, by Friday night, this new bond of the attendees who just like did not want to leave. And we're in this Facebook mastermind group for the next six months so we can continue to share stuff that we've learned through the retreat or stuff that we've applied to our businesses and share for feedback. We can, it's a great way to like stay in touch in other words. And like that is meaningful and those connections make such a difference, especially in the kind of situation that we're in as like solo entrepreneurs, you know, um, my biggest takeaway number two. So they're not really in order. Okay. It's not like biggest, second biggest, third biggest. They're just all three biggest. So the next one is the greater the risk, the greater the reward, right? So you can think of it this way, like, okay, you're going to launch your business. That's such a great risk. And there can come a huge reward with it. Or you're going to buy this ticket to come to a retreat and then you're going to buy your flight and then you're going to, you know, get your hotel book. That is a huge investment and it's a risk because it actually could be a super lame retreat. You don't know until you show up, right? It's a risk. But the reward is more knowledge, more relationships, more motivation, more inspiration because of this, you, you dedicated so much you put so much into it and yeah it could go the opposite way but it's not going to go the opposite way it's going to be awesome and that is the reward but another way to think about this is if you show up to an event with the risk of being hashtag vulnerable and opening up and I know that sounds like really like cheesy like okay vulnerable authentic we hear those words a lot but it is a risk because it's easier to show up as the cool kid it's easier to show up and be like, I already know what I'm doing in my business and I do it really well and I make this much money and this is my huge goal and it's so big because I know what I'm doing. And you feel kind of good about yourself because, you know, you are the one who knows what they're doing in the room. And it can feel a lot better to show up as that person than instead to show up as a person who's like, actually, I'm kind of struggling with this and I haven't got this part figured out yet. And I feel like I'm on a hamster wheel with this other thing because I can't figure out a system that actually works and it scares me a little bit and I'm kind of stuck with this income and I, I don't know how to increase my sales. Like that is vulnerability. That's what it looks like to be authentic and it is hard and it's 100% a risk because somebody could look at you and think that you're an idiot. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you risk people like not thinking that you're cool and I don't care how old you are. Like everybody wants to feel cool. And everybody wants to feel like they're the one who has it together, even though we really don't have it together. So like, surprise, we're never all going to have it together. <laughs> so what I saw is the people who really showed up. I mean, everybody showed up. Don't get me wrong. But those who just were like, this is it. This is what I'm dealing with. I'm totally open. I saw just their cup being filled throughout those two days because they were like, here I am, help me, you know, and they took that risk. And that reward was big. And I saw the risk that these women took last year at last year's retreat and how they opened up. And it was like lots of tears and like, here we go. We're all showing everything. And then this year I was able to see like, wow, full circle, like because of how much they opened up last year, you know, 12 months later, this is where they are in their business or in their personal lives or whatever. So yes, it's a risk to show up as yourself and be okay with like letting the not so cute stuff show, or maybe it's a risk showing up when you don't know anybody yet. Like, yeah, we know people online, but like, that's different. You know, you show up and you're like, okay, I'm the noob and it's scary. And it's, that's a huge risk. But then the greater reward is that you leave with real relationships and real connections that aren't based on you making sure that like you're the cool person in the room. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we've all been to those events where it's like, okay, really? Is that really like true? Or is that just something that you want to say? Cause it makes you feel better. You know, we've all been in a space with those kind of attendees or, you know, people in the room and it just, it's hard and it's really hard to like move past that. So I was so impressed by these women who just came and they were like their hashtag authentic selves and shared stuff like the good, the bad, the ugly, the maybe embarrassing stuff. And there was like this great reward because of it. You know, last year I did this the past two years. There's like a form that people like, you know, digitally sign. And it's basically an agreement to show up with open hands and open heart to learn. And 
agreeing to respond with kindness and with empathy and with compassion. Because when we get a room of women together who are used to like working by themselves, working for themselves, most of them, you know, we're driven. We're very driven. We have a very particular personality to be psycho enough to do this. <laughs> to be entrepreneurs and we have big personalities. And so it is a choice to say, I did not do it that way, but I'm not going to say that out loud. I'd say like, that's a really cool way to think about it. And that is a good way of doing things, even though it's not my way of doing things, you know? So this is all happening inside our head. This is our inner dialogue. And we're making the choice to say, oh, that's so cool. That's like a really good idea just to listen. If somebody's upset, we're responding in compassion and kindness, you know, like, and it's a choice because we're, of course, we're not going to agree with like every single thing that's said or every methodology that's represented in the room. But when you're able to like see these other seamstresses as like human beings with the same flaws that you have, or the same growing pains that maybe you had two years ago, the response is different than, okay, just let me make sure that I'm cool. Okay. And then I do know what I'm doing. And I want you to know that I know what I'm doing because everybody needs to know that before we leave the room. Right. So that type of response just creates a completely different experience and atmosphere for everybody in the room. And I'm just so proud. I don't know if that's the right word, but I'm, I'm really grateful that the women who came chose to show up that way and respond in kindness and lift each other up and hear like the not so cool parts of everybody's business and give meaningful feedback and like loving feedback that just meant so much to me. So if you do anything like this, if you attend like a, a, a similar retreat, or if you have like a, a chance to like meet other seamstresses in person, just remember this little takeaway, like you're going to get what you allow yourself to put out there, like the greater the risk, the greater the reward. So I'll let you interpret that as you'd like. And then the final thing is everybody has superpower. That is another big takeaway from this week. Everybody has a superpower and it's a unique superpower. And once you can really tune in to what your own superpower is, it's like nobody else matters, right? So we, we kind of opened up the retreat with that topic. I, I wanted the attendees to really think about like, Everything that we receive from our speakers, you know, all of the content that we just like absorbed, you know, Thursday and Friday. Yes, it was going to be the same words spoken to everybody, but we're going to absorb it differently based on just who we are, like what our mission is, like who we're created to be, our personalities, our interests, like different little sparkly nuggets, what we called them. Sparkly nuggets were going to stand out to different people because we're different. And that's what is so cool about being a human being is everybody is different. And I'll tell you, you know, I'd like to say that we at some point like outgrow feeling less than or like outgrow insecurities. And I don't think we ever do. I think it's just like part of being a person. But if we can be really grounded in who we are, who we were created to be, who we were created to serve and um, how we were created to serve them. Like we just know our purpose so well, the other stuff. Yeah. Those feelings could come up, but then it's like, okay, well that doesn't apply to me anyway, because that's them. That's me. It, we're different and we're created differently. So I don't need to spend my energy comparing myself to somebody else when they're not me and I'm not them. Right. So when we see stuff happening on Instagram, that looks so cool or like, oh, this business is doing this. And it's like, oh, it's like, well, they're not you. And you, you have clients who will choose to work with you because it's you. And I hate to say there are some clients who will not want to work with you because it's you <laughs> like we have to say both. Right. So it, it's, it's a, it's such a blessing to know, like, you don't need to feel those insecure feelings because there's no point. Like you are going to draw in who's supposed to work with you and whoever's left is going to find somebody else to work with and they're going to be a great match too. And there doesn't need to be that like angst, that inner angst. So we just encourage each other to listen in for those little sparkly nuggets that would speak to our superpower. And then it was really cool. Like at the end of the day on Friday, we, those of us who kind of knew what our superpower was, we were able to share it. And that can lead you in building your brand development or your personal branding or your marketing. Like 
That voice is what leads your brand growth in a really cool and genuine way because you're not making it up. You're not trying to impress somebody or like trying to be somebody that you're not. It's like, this is who I am. And oh, cool. I can build a business around this. And this is my business mission because it's so personal to me and it's so dear to me. Like I can't imagine having a business without this mission statement. Like it should be like intrinsic. Like you don't really have to think about it. And that's what makes it difficult because it's like a subconscious thing. You don't realize this is how you were created because it's just who you've been your whole life. But once you realize that's your superpower, oh my goodness, so many cool things happen. So it was really fun for me to hear these women like, I think this is my superpower, you know, and it just kind of clicks. And then you can just gain confidence in that. And maybe not confidence is the right word to use, but yeah, I'd say confidence because you you just can like lose the extra weird vibes that you pick up when those comparison feelings pop up for you. It's like, this is who I am. And if I'm not you, that's okay. And you're you. And that's really cool. And moving on, you know, on to the next big thing. So those are my big three takeaways. And I'm already a little homesick for Austin because that was maybe homesick is not the right word to use, but I'm missing everybody for sure. And somebody already made a good point. Like, I can't believe this is already a memory. Like there's so much that goes into planning for 10 months. And then like, <laughs> then you're there and it's like, oh, like, I mean, Tuesday through like Saturday was just like a blur. And now I'm like, okay, now I'm home and it's over, you know? So we just, we have the photos to look back on, which will be great. But if you are considering like, hey, that sounds like fun. Here's what's happening in the future. Okay. So for me, as I, I guess when I first started the retreat idea, I'm like, oh my goodness, I want this to be huge. And I want everybody to come. It's going to be like, get bigger and better every time. And I think what this week taught me, and I wasn't ready for it was, I don't want it to get bigger. Like we had 25 attendees, three women had to back out, unfortunately, last minute. And I'm like, okay, 25 is a great number. So I want to cap it at 25, but how do I serve more people while still preserving like this personal, intimate, like safe space where you can grow and be vulnerable? Because I really don't think that you can when you're at an event with 50 people or like hundred people, like it, you, you just, that's really hard, you know? So that's what we are brainstorming. And once I know what that will look like, I will let you know, but that is my priority. And even when I'm thinking about our membership, I want to preserve that piece too, where we are, where it's like small enough to be safe, to grow openly. And um, it just really helped shift my perspective. So that was really good for me. And as soon as I figure out what retreats will look like in the future, you'll be the first to know. But I'm I'm very excited for what's to come. And I, for me, it was just so clarifying. Like, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. And how do I preserve this and just bottle it up? And that's what we're, we're working on behind the scenes. So if you want to join, well, look out for the next retreat um, opportunity. I, I think that'll be announced within a couple months. So it'll be pretty quick here. And then obviously our membership is open. That is, I mean, there's nothing like a hug. Like obviously hu hugging in person is awesome, but Zoom calls are pretty cool too. And having this consistent group where you are growing with and like sharing the challenges and showing up. We're, we've recently changed even our, our layout for our monthly calls. So the first call of the month is always going to be a training. And the second call is going to be a sew along, which I'm really pumped about. This was not my idea. This was another member's idea. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. So the second Tuesday of the month is always going to be a sew along. And we're starting with veil creations in February. So woohoo, you know, we're just going to park our laptops in front of the sewing machine and just share our favorite tips. And we might repeat topics if need be. That's like a really heavy duty topic. And then the third Tuesday will be our girls night in call, which is like you're in your jammies, you bring your hot cocoa, you share your stories. Those calls are not recorded because I just feel like we can just share a little bit more when we know it's not recorded, right? So those things are changing within the membership and we have a lot of, we're um, increasing like our resources for the members. We have more like sub chats available for members, like specific for members with teams or who work in a home sewing studio or who work in a professional space. And then there are a few others that I created too, but I forget off the top of my head. So just, I'm 
I'm, I'm loving the, the relationships that are being built. And I'm just like praying for wisdom of like, okay, how do I nurture that and help more people on a smaller scale, <laughs> which sounds like an oxymoron. Cause I'm like, everybody's like, Oh, scale big. But I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I love, I loved what happened this past week. And I want to just bottle that up. So how do I keep this experience, but provide it for more people? So if you have an idea, let me know, but that's what we're working on behind the scenes. So those of you who came to Austin with me, thank you. You just gave me one of the best weeks ever. And I hope those of you who were not able to join that you were just given a few tidbits of inspiration and encouragement as you're building your own relationships with maybe seamstresses in your area or in the online community that showing up just as yourself and nobody else, that's probably the best gift you can give yourself. So all right. Well, I'm going to go do some laundry. Okay. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, please subscribe and share this podcast with a friend. And if you're feeling really generous, leave a review. Thanks everyone.